Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be checking out a video titled 12 Reverse Culture Shocks as an American after four years in Europe. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm too, I'm two years in Europe, actually. Yeah, I'm two years in Europe. Wild. <laughs> um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get right into this video. If you have any recommendations, click that link in the pinned comment section and recommend videos. And um, I'll check them out as soon as possible. Thank you for watching this video as usual, though. And um, yeah, without further ado, man, let's get right into this video. See what's up. Homeless people, free bread, overly friendly people, waiters asking me how I'm doing every five minutes. Welcome back to the US, David. Hey, it's David and welcome back to my channel. So I'm back in the US on summer holiday and I can't believe it's been four years in Europe, four years in the Netherlands. And every time I come back to the US, I do experience some type of reverse culture shock. So in this video, I want to share with you some of the biggest culture shocks that I've experienced coming back to the US. Let's talk about homelessness. When you think about a city like San Francisco, you might think about technology. You might think about Silicon Valley. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't think Americans would think of that. Like, I'm just being real. Like, like you go to an American right now and you ask them about, you know, cities that are flooded with homelessness. They're going to likely say this one. Like, I, I really don't think. I don't think so. I genuinely don't. You might think about a first world country, a first world city, but you'll be shocked when you come downtown to see tents, to see people shooting up, to see needles, to see a big homeless population. And it's always a big shock for me to come back, even though I grew up in the city, because the homeless population has gotten progressively worse and worse throughout the years Thanks. in a place like San Francisco, Portland. And it's a shock because in Europe, in the Netherlands, you don't see homeless people. I'm sure there are homeless people, but you just don't see them on the streets. And it's sad because many of these homeless people have mental problems. They're shouting, they're yelling, and they're not getting the help that they need. In a place like Amsterdam, I believe 30 to 40% of housing is dedicated to social housing. And there's a welfare program as well. But in a place like San Francisco, it's extremely expensive. I can imagine it to be very difficult for anyone to get by, let alone someone making minimum wage or someone who has mental problems. It's extremely hard for them. I don't know what the solution is, but it's always a big reverse culture shock for me to come back. And it begs the question, did I come back to a first world country, third world country? So let's talk about something a little bit more positive. Let's Honestly, I don't, even, I don't even know if third world country be having homeless people. Like I, like, I can't really tell you, but I don't really know. Talk about American over-friendliness because it's always a shock for me to come back to the US to have people, random bus drivers, security guards, ask me how I am, have a great day, good morning, good evening. And it's a shock because in Europe, you don't get that all the time. Now, a few weeks ago when I came back to the US, I went to the state capitol building in Sacramento, California, and as I was leaving, the security guard says something to me, and I thought I was in trouble. What did I do wrong? But he only said, have a great evening. And it was a big shock to me. I had to laugh it off. But I think it's a great thing, right? Some people might think Americans are over-friendly, superficial, but for me... I don't think... I don't think it's over-friendly or fake or nothing. Like... My experience in even being in Finland, it's it's a unique experience that I've had in Finland. It's weird. Why? Because on average, I get recognition outside. Like I'll go somewhere and people will see me and they'll, you know, do similar things that I would do in the United States, you know, and the greeting is there. Like it's not the, the extra like in America where like, how are you or have a good day or some shit like that. But it, there's a greeting factor that takes place, which actually kind of um, I like it, you know, because I personally I'm the type of guy like I see someone I don't have to know you, but I just want to greet you, you know, because you came into my presence and stuff like that. So I don't really find it bad. I guess some people might find it weird or whatever, but I don't. But um, y'all can let me know how y'all feel about it in the conversation down below. But yeah, I've definitely experienced it quite often in Finland. Quite often. 
It, it can brighten up your day. The other day I was in the elevator and this woman comes up to me. I was kind of stressed out at that point in time and she strikes up a conversation and within a few minutes I felt a lot better, that human connection. And while people might think Americans are over friendly, superficial, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. And for me, that's a great thing. And this over friendliness leads me to my next topic about customer service. You immediately notice the difference between customer service levels in the US and levels in Europe. It's a lot better in the US. Well, there are several factors. One big thing is that people in Europe are paid a fair wage, even waiters and waitresses. They're not working for tips. In the US, many waiters, waitresses have a wage, probably a minimum wage, but they're also working for tips. So there's an incentive for people to provide better customer service. Also, customer service is taught to people. It's uh, enforced. As a customer, it really helps because when you enter a restaurant, yes, it's about the food, but a big part of it, it's about the experience, the level of customer service that you get. And it's a lot better in the US. But it can go a little bit too far because the other day I was at a restaurant with friends and we were catching up. We hadn't seen each other in five, six, seven years. We were talking about deep subjects and this waitress kept coming back every five, six, seven minutes. How are you? Do you want another drink? Anything else for you? That was so annoying because yeah. we were in the middle of this very deep yeah. conversation and then this waitress kept coming in and ruining the conversation. So on the one hand, customer service. Yeah, that can be very annoying. Um, for her, I'd advise her, hey, like you can hit it back two times and just get up out of there. It's like, you don't have to be constant. You know what I mean? But I get it, you're doing your job and you're hoping to get a sale you know, additional sales, so on, so forth. Maybe she's like, they didn't ask for the bill, blah, 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 blah. Shit like that. I don't know. It's a lot better in the US, but it can also be way too much. And tipping is also a big reverse culture shock as well, because in Europe, you pay one price on the menu, but in the US, you have to readjust to the fact that on top of this price, you have to pay sales tax, and then you have to tip as well. So you're adding potentially around 25% extra on top of the price that you see on the menu. So psychologically, you have to readjust to that as well. I oh yeah, that. there's a lot more free stuff in the US. Let me explain. In a place like the Netherlands, in Europe, you have to pay to use the toilet. You have to pay for ketchup. But in the US, all these things are free. They're part of the package, part of the experience. You get free bread in restaurants. There's free ketchup, free condiments. You can use the toilet at McDonald's. And that's a really nice thing because it was. Yeah, um, the, I, I'm not sure, right? I'm not sure, but um, for Finland, I've said this many times um, to Finns and to a lot of people that I, the Finland feels and seems like a mini America to me. Like it doesn't have a lot of the negatives that the United States has, but like it just feels like it to me, okay? Like a mini version. Uh, but for the bathrooms and restrooms, whatever you want to call them in Finland, um, I've been to a restroom or a bathroom where you had to pay. I've seen a couple of those, but majority of the bathrooms, you don't actually have to pay, which is really cool. You can go to Mickey D's and... Um, uh, Burger King, you can go in all these stores and you can actually use the bathroom, which is pretty cool. Shock for me to go to Europe to have to pay for everything, but in the US, everything is part of that package. It's more convenient. There's free stuff, free ketchup, <laughs> free bread, and it's really nice. And all this free stuff might not be the best thing because I'm always shocked when I come back to see all these fat people, to see obese people. 40, 42% of Americans are obese. That's a big number. And I'm not surprised because when I look around, I see a McDonald's here, Burger King, Taco Bell, Jack in the Box. There are so many fast food restaurants and they're so convenient as well. Many of them are open 24 hours. There's this graph that was shared online that I was surprised and shocked by. It shows that Americans spend the most on healthcare, but has the lowest life expectancy. This really begs the question, why? What is going on? And when I think about it, 
Every time I come back to the U.S., I gain weight. Well, that's because of family reasons. My mom is feeding yeah, me a lot yeah. more. But people also commented online saying that Europeans, when they come to the U.S., they also gain a lot more weight than when they travel elsewhere. And I think it goes back to the fact that when you look at the food, what's inside the food, it's a lot healthier in a place like Europe as compared to the U.S. I don't know enough to comment on this, but from the comments, it shows. That's interesting. Um, that's in that's that's unique. Um, I don't. Hmm. Hmm. I cannot really give a definite like thought to this because like I'm the same weight like I've been been pretty much the same with my entire life uh and I I've I've eaten a lot of American fast food a lot but I, I cannot remember rec or recall it having a dramatic impact on me I know I felt I felt different in my body but I cannot recall it having like an impact on my um, physical so my size but I, I definitely know it definitely impacted my insides how I felt inside yeah it wasn't it wasn't good knows that what goes into the food in the US it's not good it still shocks me to this day to look around to see people who are not just say fat but really really obese you don't see that every day in a place like Amsterdam or in Europe in general. Another reverse culture shock that I have coming back to the US connected to obesity is the fact that supermarkets, grocery stores are Man, huge. big. They're huge in the US. There's anything and everything that you can find, a lot more variety. And this can be a good or bad thing. Now, in the Netherlands, there are these big supermarket chains as well, and you can find anything and everything there, but there aren't as many options as the US. In the US, if you go down a supermarket, you can find 30 options of cereal, anything and everything. So on one hand, it's quite this the experience, like right? You have so many options, but That's on the other Walmart. hand, it can be really hard to choose. I spend a lot more time shopping in the US because, oh, there's this new variety of this, there's a new cereal, there's this new package of orange chicken. And it's on one hand fun, but you also get, what do you call it, decision fatigue, or it's hard to choose because there's so many options, but it is fun. And yes, you have a lot more variety, more convenience, more stores in the US but yeah. you have to drive everywhere to get there. And that's always a big shock for me coming back to the, to the US because I could be driving five, six, seven hours in a place like California and still be in the same state. If I drive five, six, seven hours Thanks. in Europe, I could be in a different country, sometimes two countries. And that's one thing I do like about Europe. I could take a train and be in Paris within three, four hours, London, same time as well. In the US, the distances are just very big. And that could be a good thing if you enjoy driving, road tripping, there's a lot of time for reflection but you do need a car to get around in the US. And public transit- A lot of miles on the damn car. <laughs> That's what that is, a lot of miles. Um, but nah, he's totally right. Like the driving distance is, is totally so different between the US and um, Europe. Like I can't stress it, like with Finland, it is so ironic that I can easily be in Sweden. I've never done it before but I can easily be in Sweden just by just going right over there. And um, we got Buddy over here on the east side too, but um, <clears throat> the whole point is you can do stuff like that, which is pretty cool because it's a country, not a state. States are different, but they're not different in, in a sense, like a country different. So um, it's pretty cool. Transportation, well, how do I put this in a friendly way? Public transportation in the US is not so great as compared to Europe. Well, because the distances are so big, you have to drive everywhere, but 
the infrastructure in the US, it's not really built for public transportation, it's built for driving. Even in a place like San Francisco, where you have multiple modes of transportation, it's not so efficient. I also lived in LA for 10 years and oh well, public transportation there is a nightmare. It's even worse than driving there because I remember having to get to work and driving took about an hour and a half sometimes. But if I took public transportation, it would have taken three hours one way. Now that's pretty bad. Damn. And when you drive everywhere, you see all these billboards, you see oh. capitalism in your face. And that's always a, a big shock for me coming back <laughs> to, right? The ads, the billboards. You know what's ironic? I'm literally just clocking this. I've not seen a single billboard my entire time in Finland. I've not seen a single billboard. I am so sure I've not seen a billboard. I am so sure of it. Like I've seen advertisements. Like I remember with the election in Finland, you had like some stuff, you know, like pictures and stuff posted up on like this one type of billboard, but it wasn't a billboard like that. It was like a, a billboard in the city center, you know, where they just have a bunch of crap. Right. And, um, it was posted up. Right. And, um, it was kind of crazy to see, you know, none of these actually. Everywhere, on your TV, on cars, in public toilets, everywhere. That's part of American society. The fabric of American society is capitalism. And you grow up with it as well. Even on TV, I was shocked to see all these commercials. I was in this cafe the other day and I read this poster that said, why be average when you can be amazing? And I had to laugh because it reminded me of the fact that I'm back in the US. Because in the Netherlands, people are taught to be average. You don't want to stand out. But in the US, really? we're taught at a very early age that you want to be the best. Yes, you want to be, be better than everyone else. And it's drilled into our mindsets, the education system. We are competing to get into a good school, to get a good job. And we're always competing and trying to be overly ambitious, which can be a great thing because for me, it pushed me. People around me pushed me to become a better version of myself. But it can drain the but heck out of you. at the same time, it can be dangerous if you don't know how to take care of yourself because you could always be comparing yourself and running on this treadmill of trying to be better than everyone else, comparing yourself. In one sense, it's a great thing, but on the other hand, it can be dangerous. But I always have to laugh because the mindset of living in the Netherlands, trying to be average, is completely different than the mindset of Americans trying to stand out. And speaking of standing out versus standing in, it's always a, a big shock for me to come back to the US to reconnect with friends and for them to tell me that they're working until 11, 12, 1 a.m. Because people do work a lot more hours in the U.S. as compared to Europe. I also remember working a lot more hours in the U.S. as well. It's a difference in culture, work culture. People in Europe Facts. seem to work to live. People in the U.S. seem to live to work and there's no right or wrong answer but it is true people do work longer hours in the u.s Facts. people get less vacation days in the u.s as well Facts. people in europe especially now in the summertime everyone is off on summer holidays and vacation yeah there's no right or wrong answer but that's a fact and that's always a shock for me to come back to the u.s Wow, I can't believe it's been four years abroad for me. And every time I do come back to the US, I do experience reverse culture shock. Probably because I've changed as a person, I've learned so yeah. much. I guess there's no right or wrong answer to live a good life. Like, the reality is, like, he's right. There's no right or wrong answers to live a good life. Like, I, me personally, I've always said it. You know, if that's what makes you happy. Go ahead, do what you got to do, right? I've always said it. If, you, if you're doing something and it's not affecting nobody else, be you. Do do whatever you prefer to do, right? But um, the American lifestyle is not for everyone, right? But for a lot of people, they'll enjoy it and they'll love it, right? But the European lifestyle also is not for everyone. Some will love it, some will hate it, right? At the end of the day, is we all have life and we all, we all are promised death. So whatever you do with your life... You know, you just got to do that. But I'm not going to stress over somebody else doing. But like he said, Europe really do change you because um, 
I think to myself that I'm, you know, pretty confident and pretty out there being in Finland, but maybe if I just go right back to the US tomorrow and I'm like there, I'm like, shit, damn, I'm the shy one. <laughs> but either ways, man, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, Mata here. Peace.